Welcome to Car Cream on Scrap More with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today it's Free Pattern Friday. Yay! It's Free Pattern Friday. Last Friday I showed you uh, the bubbles block, right? This is a string block, so it's, it's going to show up in the string and crumb series as well. But it's a string block that I sew onto coffee filters, so I have a nice round template. Well, today is our first day, and I'm going to show you what you can do with these bubble blocks. And it's going to be a lot of fun, and it, I have got my blue strings down to nothing. And I also sewed all my black strings together to make bubble blocks. I have no black strings left, so it really uses up a lot of strings very quickly. So uh, the other person I want to talk to you about is Dawn at Always in Stitches. Her YouTube channel, she's a quilt quilt store or quilt shop where you know you buy all your cottons and stuff like that she has lots of fun tutorials on her channel and she's just a bubbly happy person so when you go check her out tell her Brenda sent you and you know we'll we'll see <laughs> we'll see if we can get her like a surprise shout out uh, the other thing is we have a Facebook group and we are trying out a impromptu sew date with the rooms that are allowed within our Facebook group. So if you're looking for a sew date and you just want to hang out with a couple of other people, you can tell them I'm in the room and whoever else wants to join you can. And it's, we're testing this. We haven't really decided this. Also, our Facebook group hosts a virtual sew date once a month. And we invite other groups that I am uh, familiar with. You know, I'm familiar with Marie's cre uh, Crafty Creations and all that. So I invite all her crew. There, it's all we gather. There's a lot of intelligent, happy, talented quilters and we're all chattering and giggling and we're getting a lot of sewing done. So come on in right, right away. We got a lot of sewing here to do. Okay. <laughs> okay, here is one of the bubble blocks that we're working with, right? I've still got the paper on it. And you'll notice here there's, a, you know, there's, there is fabric coverage there, but you know, um, it's a little close maybe for some people, but it worked. Um, don't be afraid on these bubble blocks to put lighter colors in like your white background with your blue and pink flowers or a real pale blue or, you know, a navy herringbone, you know, houndstooth, I guess it's called houndstooth print. Don't be afraid to throw that in. And any blue will work. Blue and reds are the easiest, actually the easiest ones to work with because the of the color saturation. Well, actually red's easier than blue, I find. But anyways, so I'm flipping this across a really cheap piece of uh, muslin fabric. Muslin fabric, I have lots of it. You could use a really lightweight interfacing for this applique, but that's you know that's where we're at this is what we're going to use because that's what I have lots of in my sewing room and I don't use muslin for anything else so uh, you know I not I do mock-ups occasionally but you know so now I'm going to put on my quarter inch foot and I'm just going to sew a quarter inch seam all the way around this and here we go start a little bit and we just gently steer that curve you want to be, you know, and it doesn't, you don't, you don't have to be perfect. I haven't taken the paper off yet. I will be taking this a little bit out. And you see, I'm more holding this back and it'll work. It works. You just gently sew. You don't have to get too crazy that area where it's short where the fabric is short you want to take your time you know you just give them all a quick press and you're good you know now oh, I'm gonna get a little bit of oh I gotta get this out of the way okay so I'm coming up to where I started and I just go back and forth a bit just to there we are and now okay and now I just cut that. Now, oh, I forgot my fabric scissors. So we're gonna cut with the world's smallest Teflon scissors ever. I'm just gonna cut the circle. Now that's exactly how fast this is. It took, what, less than two minutes or three minutes to cut this or sew around this once it's on. And it takes a little bit longer to do an applique circle like this when you first start, okay? 
Now I'm just going to cut all of this off. I'm going to excess all the fabric because I don't want all that excess fabric when I turn this block. I don't want it all, you know, I don't want it all inside the block. I want it gone. And because it reduces bulk in your quilt and you, it's easier to turn if it's all gone. So all of this goes into a pet bed. Okay, so now we're just going to, we're going to put a little slit in here while we remember to do that. Just a little, you know, little X, X or whatever. I'm going to make the X a little bigger if you'd like. But I'm going to tear away this coffee filter. Now, there, that's how fast you can rip this off. And it comes off really quick. You know, you don't have to get too fussy with it. You can get, you know, once it's in a circle and it's sewn, the edges are stable. And you can remove your coffee paper. You can do like a whole whack of these. And then you would sit in front of the TV watching a film or get the grandkids to, you know, how many coffee filters can you rip off of a, off the stuff and see how well they do. And they love doing this kind of picking and, you know, all this because it's tea paper like almost like um, tea bag paper like it's a really lightweight paper that we're we're using you know it comes off really quick I mean I short I did shorten my stitch length because I prefer to do it that way when I'm working with strings because you never know you know what's on a bias and what's not on a bias I'm not worrying about anything you know too fancy here we go get that little piece off and now this coffee bag or tea bag paper can go and be recycled, right? And go into the recycling because it'll decompose, right? Into my garden or into somebody else's garden or whatever. So here we are. We're going to turn it. And now we have a lovely little circle to sew on to a piece of fabric. Now, I know you guys are sitting there like, but, 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 but. <laughs> I can just hear you guys just like, oh, wait a minute. And you just want to finger press that so that you just start to see the very beginning of the fabric. You know, that's where you can iron this if you want. I'm just going to finger press it in place because where I'm sitting in my sewing room right now, I'm actually trapped away from a hot iron. But that's okay. So you just, and you don't worry about pieces like uh, this. You know, normally a bubble block, you can use either crumbs. Let's say you have crumb blocks and you're not sure what to do with them, but you want a, a little bit modern idea as to how to do a, how to, what to do with all those crumb blocks. Well, uh, you can, you can do it very quickly just by sewing them onto, into uh, an applique circle, right? I mean, I have a cutting circle too that I can use. So that is not perfect, but I think I'm ready to start my applique. I probably should, you know what? I'm going to cut here and I'm going to iron this circle flat. So I get a really sharp press because the muslin fabric is taking a lot of room on the turn. So let me iron it and I'll come back. Okay, now that I have my circle pressed the way I want it, and it, it does look like a circle. Remember, I'm using muslin fabric. If you were had a lot of really ultra thin interfacing, that would work as well. So I'm just going to go through here now. I'm going to change feet because I want a really tiny little top stitch. Now, this is where everybody, I hate top stitching applique. And you know what? If you mess up, you can use a blanket stitch to get past any oopses. And I should probably be doing this in blue, but I'm not. I'm doing it in white, so I'm hoping you guys can see what I'm doing as I go around. But you just want to gently steer this. And because it's a smaller curve, right? You see me do, do this on like bigger bigger fabrics, right? Or like bigger curves. There, a, a bigger, the bigger the curve, the easier it is to sew. Now, as you're doing this, if you happen to, 
you know, fall off the edge or whatever. This is perfect where place where you do a little hand blanket applique. Or you can pull out your fancy stitches on your sewing machine. My fancy stitch on this sewing machine is a zigzag attachment. And I end up doing a lot of hand uh, app or hand embroidery on top of blocks like this. So I don't worry too much about it. And it's a good way of using up embroidery thread that I have around the around the house here. There. Well, this is coming along nice. very simple little, and it's a fast way of making a block, you know, I mean, just make a bubble block, right? And this looks really cool if um, my friend, one of my friends, she put a, a bubble block into a quilt show. She did hers in crumbs. It was just stunning. And she put all the same family of crumbs, the color family, like she did blue ones and orange ones and green ones and it was just gorgeous, just gorgeous. So, I'm gonna get all this stuff off the back. Right, there we go. Now, okay, so now, there we are. I'm gonna turn this over. And now, and I'm going to pull two layers out like this. So the only layer I'm pulling forward on the blue side is the blue. So I have now the muslin and the background. And I'm gonna cut in like so. Just make a little snip. Make sure you don't cut the blue, because that would be really bad at this point in the game. And take the world's smallest Teflon scissors and just cut out the back. Just like that. See what I'm doing? Just around my stitches. Very neat. And there. Now, if you like doing your applique where you have a fancy stitch on your sewing machine where it's really cute, that's that's where you pull it out, right there. So I can now I can put this into a dog bed or a pet bed. And this I can cut out some, you know, two inch by three and a half inch bricks or maybe make um you know, put into my strings the remainder. I can do a couple of things with this, so I'm just going to keep this handy. I can also make another circle out of this, so that also is a little bit of a thing. So now we get to our big ta-da moment. And here we are with our big ta-da moment, right? I put a very pale green and orange background because I figured the orange would contrast quite nicely with the blue, but the green would still be complementary with the blue. I figured, okay, that's kind of a cool background very unexpected now I haven't decided what size I'm going to cut this down to yet and I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to add an accent piece like a line through or another circle or I haven't decided whether I'm going to add a cat on a fence or make it into an art block I haven't decided any of that yet but here I am with my bubble block and now I'm getting all these wonderful cool little ideas in my head as to what I'm going to do with this so I figured, okay, you know, I could do the fence. I could also just do embroidery, right? People, when they see something hand embroidered on their quilt, they, their wow factor goes through the roof and a simple little blanket stitch would do wonders just around here. Now my, I didn't fall off of the edge of this and my, you know, top stitching is not too bad, but if you're top stitching wobbly, I'm gonna do a video on blanket stitching by hand just so you guys see how it does add a lot to the block. And I haven't decided which one I'm going to do it on yet, but I could just do one on this. So this is where we're at. We haven't decided what we're doing yet, but we're gonna have fun with it. So stick with me. Next Friday, we're doing Bubbles Part 3, and you'll, <laughs> this is gonna also be another fun little block. So you guys take care, safe travels, all the rest of the stuff. If you're celebrating Thanksgiving in the, the US, happy Thanksgiving. Okay, you take care. Bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for 
coming along with us on our little fun adventure here that we're having. We do have a Facebook group now, and that Facebook group is got some very very talented quilters in there and we love sharing and, and you know posting pictures and commenting and it's it's been a lot of fun and the advantage of the Facebook group is sometimes I drop patterns in there early so you kind of get a hint as to what is coming next after the nosegay so long we're going to be doing curves boot camp right away so we'll get you sewing those curves and it'll be fun it'll be a lot of it'll be a lot of interesting little blocks that we've got to work on but we would like you to share, like, and subscribe. Telling your friends about us and, and letting them know that you kind of like our channel, that, that means so much to us here. So you take care. You have a fabulous week ahead. Okay, bye.